where can all doors lead when the experience is now? In life, you go through many positions where you, life asks you to be a leader or life is giving someone else the chance to be a leader and is giving you the chance to be a follower. This does not mean that you must be bound and enslaved by an ideology of someone controlling you. <laughs> we must acknowledge externality and internality with a properness that is very mindful. And it's that moment where there is a graceful atmosphere of self-contemplation where you're not wanting anything from this sense of contemplation. And even though when we were kids, they, they told many of us to stop daydreaming, <clears throat> we realize once you observe the nature of thought and you maintain a sense of concentration and mindfulness to it, uh, you find, you figure it out. Now, this mindfulness, I don't want to just say mindfulness because that's what I heard first, you know. But what it really means is that you need to acknowledge yourself with a clarity that only you can give yourself. And so then your knowing will be situated in a manner where it doesn't matter where you go. You are comfortable and you have an existential responsibility for your moment of being. You're aware that you're an experiencer. What that means Regardless of how much the moth flied in the burial grounds, all songs are shuffled and presented to you with the ability of you acknowledging it in a new alignment. What that means is I say Apple, the idea is in view. Now you can project it, bring relevance, bring memories, bring anything. And there's a very burning passion. What that means is we're not... What that means is we're not here. To constantly be behind the door, our unknown and sense of knowing must become naturally calibrated. Our sense of higher dimensional communication, as many people seek, it is not higher dimensions you're seeking. You must observe the dimensions you're in, and by your own observance and ability to perceive reality beyond the ideologies that you were spoon-fed with all the... cultural and social programming, regardless, every man at the end of the day can take off his suit and put it in the closet very comfortably. What that means is regardless of how you're engaging, regardless of what you're doing, you need to keep a layer of ethics, which is selfless, but you also need to uh, also keep a layer of ethics, which is selfish, but not selfish without an awareness of selflessness. What that means is you realize that you're a human being and you're in the human experience. And so what is your contribution? Immediately, even before you're doing anything, your presence. And so you must see this contribution, this presence being one that is becoming able uh, <clears throat> beyond the thinker. The thinker is too slow and life is passing us by and we wonder where the living went. <clears throat> For all that was required was the grace of the man who knew he was alive. A sense of divinity will begin to guide you and this sense of divinity is actually it begins with an innocence and you realizing where your trust is what that means is there's some things in this reality what that means in front of you right now in your moment there's certain things you trust certain things you don't know what are happening and what not what that means is there is this constant interpretation of what I know and knowledge is everywhere around us I know this I know this I know what this person is saying what this person is saying but at the same time the knower seems to be just just an existential observance it seems that that guy who sat on the stone with his fingers on his chin thinking about life, thinking about a thinker, began to suddenly see all that he was doing was sitting on a stone. 
because thought is present relevant to the activity of the objectivity. So if you become still and in a sense very silent within your being, you begin to observe, and I recommend it, doing this in nature, you begin to see a clarity. And this clarity comes from the strength you find in the moments where you knew you had done something, and regardless of how it was acknowledged, you now acknowledge it, and you walk with the greatness that you know is within you. What that means is it is not a dynamic where we, you need to climb a ladder out of the samsara, out of this elusive sense of uh, not being activated properly. It's for you to realize that how you can be activated is by simply seeing what is here and then being aware of it to the degree that the illusions and the deception and all the fear is melting. It is, it is as if it is dissolving, it is breaking. It's as if the natural presence of your being is, is, is remembering itself and that remembrance suddenly. A lion has found the roar within the pond that taught it more than sheep's clothing. Regardless of your garment of how your moment is manifest, the fabric of the cosmos is weaved in such a way that there can be no opinions, for all opinions become so infinitesimal to the observance that can go beyond a sense of space and time and even having form here. Consciousness is a natural phenomena. You tell me, where is the problem? And the problem is in how this biological being looked at itself in the mirror and chose to create words that kept certain worlds the same. As hopefully many poets awaken for this multidimensional renaissance. <laughs> Novelty will truly show itself. Eight billion people, eight billion moments of self-awareness. Why are we seeing drops when the rivers of life are just flowing? And you need trust. You need trust and trust is what allows an eternal view. You must trust life. And a very interesting sage, this yogi on YouTube, I was really listening to his talk and he was saying there are two ways you can really live life, you know. One, you trust life, one, you don't. <laughs> and you see, if you trust life, you may feel as if Gosh, am I going to get robbed? Am I going to be, be, be too... Be too <laughs> am I going to be a gazelle like near cheetahs? No. You are working with a trust that is not here to judge an efficiency or inefficiency or give you a certain mask. Your trust is in your experience of all that is present within your moment. What that means is forget about judgment. Forget about these individual problems when the biggest individual problem was where is the collective? And it seems to be here beyond the reach of language and see that is where doubt fades. For the grace of a blind man was that he walked further than anyone else to see. And if you acknowledge these moments within you, these I don't knows, these realities you are saying I am in, and you bring it in front of the cosmos, and just like how you would perhaps, out of a chaotic sense of revelation, rip out the tablecloth that had maintained your structured lives. And so you begin to see suddenly there is not an anger, there is not an anguish, there is a transparency. The, the, it, the self has broken and the selfless has stood. This knowing means that ideology does not need to bully you. And how does ideology bully you? When you think you are the idea, for an idea can be judged. The minute you bring it into the realm, with the minute you bring it into the plane of existence, even what ed you will see life crumble that which chooses to segment itself.
Because where else can the nature be real? Where else has the being allowed itself to see self-awareness beyond space and time? Even though some, some men will buy Gillette razors to shave a beard that will never stop growing. The wisdom that is in your natural phenomena is your guidance to the greatest view beyond any door. And <laughs> I remember myself being very young and I go pick up this notebook and I just begin writing the first article I, I, I believe I ever wrote in this life. And I, I wrote The Mind of the Exceptionist because I wanted to get a sense of what the exception was. And I noticed later on because the article I wrote then, I, I described the mind as some, having something, having many doors, and we have access to many keys, but we need to find the proper alignment, something like that, right? I was very young, of course, very young. I think I was, uh, I think I was nine or ten. <laughs> uh, but after I wrote that, I later on realized, years later, that how you are naturally designed and the walk you have lived is constantly providing you the next moment properly. What is improper is how we react to the moment, and in that we are not condemned by an external reality, but by an internality that knows that it has created a self so cruel that mankind seem to have forgotten its kindness. But we will see a new occurrence will bring such a current. What that means is you don't understand the power of an existential mirror. You don't understand the power of just for one moment going in just nature or in a park somewhere or sitting beside a stream and just closing your eyes and being silent and still. And then gently opening them and just observing the nature of this world. What that means is don't go to Google because Google was made by man and you want to know beyond man so you must work through your experience and sincerity and honesty will guide you and in that moment of stillness and silence you will not get a very new wisdom of self but you will find that once the ripples on the pond have settled There was no fear of disappearance when there is a reflection of a limitless sky. In your knowing, you are the freedom. That has become your eyes of reality. with the grace of our greatest leaders, with their inspiration. Right now what that means is visualize the greatest men of our time and the greatest men in your awareness, in the edges of your mind, the greatest leaders that you can bring in whatever sense of uh, imaginative view and see them behind you, see them walking behind you and see their words guiding within an integrative movement of all that you know, taking a step into the unknown, which is an eternal moment of novelty. In your lack of interpretation, you never needed to rest when you were the peace. And 
something I would like to share with you. Is this quote by a man named Rabindranath Tagore. Now, of course, I'm sure there's, there's a more accurate version of pronouncing his name. But this man had such vision. And he says, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. In your wonder, when your collective sense of being present here, what that means is the presence of the world within you, you will see that the dreamer has the ability to project the greatest possibilities. But as he awakens to how he can bring these dreams to reality, he sees that life was service. And he, when you act, and behold, service was joy. And so, Tagore goes on to say, I acted and behold, service was joy you begin to realize that your sense of objectivity and physicality and externality and idea of your name is here to serve others. But in serving others, it would experience a joy which would be that moment where you have not just lived as one human being. You have lived as humanity. You have lived as all that is, and your intentions were clear. Service was joy. And this is, of course, a lesson which comes and goes as, as playfully as the curves on the golden ratio. That when we live to serve through our whole intelligence of our moment, all that our moment can be, when you honestly and clearly present yourself within the presence of this universe, your sense of knowing will be transcendentally situated in a manner where you will see beyond the act you have done. And so beings who are able to see beyond the act begin to see that there is not only a presence of infinite possibilities of other actors and spectrums opening up in your vision, but that beyond the spectrum, even infinity, bowed down on the grounds of non-existence to then appear within the novelty of the awareness that is now you. And in how life is aware of life, you are an illumination that shines bright. 
Rabindranath Tagore has another beautiful quote, and I would like to end off with the wisdom in his words. You can't cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water. You cannot live well without stepping through all doors of limitation and in getting engaged with life in a manner where there is not a sense of individual judgment but a constant recalibration of a sense of being you begin to see the drop was never the drop when it was the ocean and we are present in this ocean of consciousness may we pick up the sands of time and bless the shore that has brought us here it is time to explore the hidden depths of the nature of all existence and do this gracefully, naturally, compassionately. You're not trying to get anything out of this. This is your sense of self-exploration. This is your elegant approach to meditation. But not a meditation that is not meaningful. A meditation in which you see everything in your life has brought you to this moment to bask in the greatest wonder known to man. Man judges himself through his knowledge and through his knowing and through his sense of certainty, I'm this, you're that. But some men look at the nature of where man's knowledge is and it is basking in the unknown and the unknown does not judge. For chaos has always been dancing with order. As you breathe new dimensions, a simultaneous sense of experience is going to activate. It's at first going to feel as if you have, a, you have two thoughts at once, just like how you would drink from two straws from the same cup. It's as if your imagination, suddenly there's two flows and you're aware. But as you become aware, you must also see that the reason you are is because you are beyond it, so you are the immediate originator of the reality. You must take the existential responsibility that you know what you're doing. But you are also observing that knowing, and so you also trust life and how it would naturally guide you to where your experience needs to be based on the way you have walked. Every experience counts when you stop counting. <laughs> As we dissolve into our last stare, may we wave beyond time and space. Much blessings and Namaste.